Thank you very much, Madam Chair, and thanks to all the witnesses present. Uh, let me say that this is my 28th year on this committee, and this is the most prevailing concern that has been expressed to me around the country since I've been a member of this committee, most especially with my own area. Uh, it was one of the first issues that I started working on when I came to this committee. Secretary LaHood, who came from this committee, who to become Secretary of Transportation, worked with us on language in order to make sure that when the language was put in the RFPs, there would be some sanctions if they weren't followed. What we've gotten since we put this in place is a lot of RFPs that included minorities, but never got them involved once they got the RFP. I have been visited with women, minority women, from all over this country complaining about that. He helped us come up with language, but we could not get Chairman Micah uh, to support it at the time. So, and I, I noticed that there's still overwhelming evidence of discrimination. Uh, it's, and really, when we first started looking at this, there were companies that were putting the name of the company into the spouse's name in order to get Anglo women qualified. And so all of that has been experienced. And I, I really have a great interest in fairness and opportunity uh, with it. So I've heard great testimony. I appreciate everyone being here. But I want to know from the witnesses, when these RFPs are sent out and the minority participation is dictated, have you experienced any reason to believe that it is a serious effort to include minorities? Let me start with Mr. McDonald. Thank you for the question. I believe that to your point, and you've certainly been at it longer than I have, but you're 100% correct. The language that was put in, it's my job as the disadvantaged business enterprise liaison officer to make sure and working with aviation and or transit, when those RFPs cross our desk, I have to make sure that that language is there that even supersedes that good faith effort. I have to make sure that there's languages that's not impediments or hurdles to the minority. So yes, I do believe there's been situations as the agencies prepare their RFPs, that that language that supports DBE is silent and those things that give opportunities to override the program are present, but it is the responsibility of individuals like myself, UCPs, as we're reviewing these, to catch that and to address that. And I can say, at least in my seven years here in Broward, especially the last three years, and working with my aviation director and my transit director, they've worked with me to assure that their RFPs and with their staff, we are addressing that. But it certainly has happened in the past, no question. Thank you very much. Uh, Mr. McDonald, I've had minority women visit me in Dallas, Texas from Florida, complaining that their names went into the RFPs, but they never got a call or even a word after the, the contract was let. Have you heard any reports of that? Yes, I have. And one of the examples I can explain is that when the DBEs are a part of the process and we do the letters of interest and the prime has to identify which DBEs they're going to be working with. As you can imagine, most primes go out and find five or six to try to reach that 10, 15 or 20 percent goal. When they submit their RFP, they have to identify specifically which of the DBEs they're going to use. It's that review that we do, and what we've started doing is asking our agency, but the primes, notify the non-DBEs or the non-minorities that you're not going to use. But we require that they submit who they're actually going to use as a part of the bid, and as a part of our posting, we list that. So it is true that a prime would have five or six to try to reach their goal, but they only need two or three, and it's the two or three they submit on the bid, we hold them to, but yes, the other ones should be notified that they weren't used, but we definitely record minority and women and the participation. Thank you very much. I have heard from my own city 
uh, the um, DART, which is the Dallas Area Rapid Transit, that they have no power to insist that the RFP that was selected uh, include what they have in their uh, in their contract that they they cannot enforce the fact that they have named the minority firm and then they don't hire them. Uh, do you have difficulty looking at the language to see whether or not there's enforcement language there because it's not it's not being done in Dallas, Texas? And I just wonder if if any of you have any experience with saying that the hands are tied of the local authorities but not sticking with the contract once it is let. Mr. Ali. Unmoved. Yes, ma'am, Congressman, I apologize. I'm aware of a situation where um, I've heard many stories like you've heard from Mr. McDonald of contracts like that, but I'm not aware of any specific situation where that has occurred. I've had members express this to me, but I've not been witness to any of the information on it. The gentlelady's time has expired. The gentlelady's time has expired. 